TNA, have you ever wanted to build a table saw but you don't have the money or the space? This video will show you how to do it without breaking your bank account. We searched the internet for ideas. Some of them were too weak and some of them were too complicated to make. There were a lot of tables involved in an existing table saw, basically just extending them. We wanted something more like this style, but my shop is small and when not in use, it needs to fit on my shelf. The shelf itself is 50 by 100 centimeters. I know we can make a way better table saw. This is my cheap circular saw that we're gonna use. We have three main objectives. One, cheap. Two, accurate. Three, comp Bonus feature, it can be used with other tools like a router. We start by cutting 1.6 cm birch plywood into the table bench. Don't forget to add painter's tape to protect against chip out. The piece is cut, there are 30 by 60 centimeters. First layer, what I've done is I clamped it together on this line. This is the whole cut up what we need and it's easier to cut because it's two plywoods cut in half. And I've taken two millimeters to the left because of the thickness of the blade. And we're gonna cut until the edge of the blade is almost at the corner. And then we're gonna stop, do the same on the other side and then finish the rest with the jigsaw. Eight, 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 eight rounds in the 45 and go down. When plunge cutting, you need to be super careful because the saw can kick back like a bull. This is what we're left with, pretty close. So this side over here I have a little bit more, but this one is spot on. Passive aggression, passive aggressiveness. I left them hanging like loose. This wouldn't be a woodworking video if I wouldn't do some chisel work. Ties is loose ties. Either not, he begging to go or not. Depends on the situation, he going up like inflation. Now we need to do this for the second layer, but the other one is a bit bigger. Two layers on top of each other and I mark with a pencil the outline of the first piece. This is the inner frame and this is the cut line for the new one. That's what we're gonna cut right now. I'm freaking stupid, I don't know how, but I missed the, by two centimeters, so the hole is a bit longer than I anticipated. It's fine because I need to cut this out anyway, but uh, this is how it's looking, so now we need to glue everything up. This was a really stressful glue up. I need to buy myself a proper roller. You can see me put back a lot of glue because I put too much on. I'm also putting into the grooves the two connecting panels between the two of them. This is the clamping setup, let's go put it inside. I knew I would use these weights. This is great, everything needs to dry, everything is clamped up. One eternity later. My brother John in the lake, how could all you people miss? Now, we need to take it outside. Guess who's back? Back again. Now we need to make the piece in the middle. We're gonna make a, a template first. This is the template, how you can see, perfect. Now we're gonna place the measure. Look at me, now. Dead. Now we're gonna add edge bending. Razuni meant to say we're adding edge bending, but actually it's just strips of wood to make the stronger edges and make them also nicer. Razuni cut miters on all the joints. Then he made holes to connect the slats to the plywood with screws. After that came the sanding, using a jig to hold the pieces in place while using the belt sander. Up next, we're gonna make the fence. We're gonna make it out of these two birch pieces. Azuni's gonna cut them down to 12 centimeters and this one's gonna be 15 centimeters. This is our Zuni's sort of old table saw. As you can see, making cuts on it, it's pretty sketchy at best and it requires two people. Now we're gonna cut the triangles over here to hold up the fence. Now we take this one and we create. Looking great, now we need to sand them down. I'm also sanding the fence because it's easier now than afterwards when we'll put everything together. This time I'm using an orbital sander because it's better for smaller stuff. Now our zone is marking where we need to screen all the triangles to square everything up. And he's using this piece of wood to use as a spacer. Now that we mark where the triangles need to go, our zone is pre-drill holes. Don't run for our zone, put your safety goggles on. For assembling, we're connecting the triangle, first one and the last one. Then we will add the glue. This glue up went way better because we planned it out like Razuni said. We think screening the first and last piece, then coming back with glue, is the best method to ensure the best results. Everything's all glued up. Up next, we need to put on these through the sides. This is the side rail. Uh, I was only went to sand everything down. First time he's sanding on his own. And this one, I need to mark it so we can screw it from the side. He says that he wants to say something. Luther! This is where the screws need to go. Always remember, kids, pre drill your holes. Now we're connecting the two side posts. Woo! The saw is gonna go over here, and this is the fence. Looking amazing! Up next, the mechanism that locks the whole thing in place. No! Now we're gonna make the holes for the mechanism. The yeah, mechanism. Now we need to drill through over here and make a rail. We took a pencil with this hole over here, traced it out, and this is what we're left with. So now we're gonna take it out with the router. When cutting a deep groove with the router, trust me, you need to make a couple of passes. Otherwise, it won't work. This is no long enough. So it didn't pass all the way. I'm gonna drill it. This is the rail on one side done. The bolt goes in. We're gonna do this on the other side. 
this is all for today. Tomorrow Zuni is gonna continue the mechanism and we're gonna finish all the stuff we have to do. Zuni started off by welding the L part from a square metal rod. He's using a metal right angle to ensure that the piece is welded at 90 degrees. To warm up the electrode, he welds a bit on the scrap metal piece, then he tack welds the two pieces together. You can see that the weld is good, so he welds all the seams. No, no, don't touch that, it's hot. It's still really hot, it's like, it's not even listening, Arzuni, it's still hot. Maybe y'all will listen to me. When you weld, the piece is really hot. Mmm, damn, them L's looking fine. Now we need to weld the nuts. Before welding, we need to fill them up with sand or soil in order to protect them from weld spars that can ruin the threads. Nice job, Arzuni. Now we need to make bolts that fit into the L nuts. They're made out of simple bolts with a nut and a loop on top for grip. Now that Arzuni has done the locking mechanism, we need to make room for the threaded inserts. On the four corners, we're gonna mark. In order to center the piece, I'm using cardboard and paper. And we're gonna take a small bit and mark through the hole. These are the four markings. My basic holes are done. We're gonna size up the threaded insert and mark with painter's tape how deep I need to go. And drive in the threaded insert with an L and Q. Oh, mistakes were made. And uh, he's right, mistakes were made. And I'm frankly not happy about them. First one I done. It broke, so I had to make sure that it's flush. Second one, same. Third one, I learned my lessons, but still I had to sharpen it down so it's better. And the last one is uh, good. The thing you need to do is take, take this bit and blue shirt on here. What you need to do is take a bit that's the same diameter as your threaded insert and drill it in. Now back to the video. Uh, First part of the drill, so it has a place for the head. Otherwise, they snap and they don't work. Now we need to make a place for the bolt head. In order to check that everything is flush and the bolt doesn't interfere with the whole plywood sheet, I take my square, rub it against it. If it doesn't have any friction, it's good. That's what she said. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Everything is nice and flush. Now we need to make the place for the saw. We make a plunge cut with the circular saw. I don't know whether to cry or to be mad, but we made a mistake over here. It's not on this line, it's on this line over here because of how the saw goes from underneath. But it's in, it's working. We've tested out on a piece. Next, this is the blade line and we need to mark out a place for the ruler. This is the gauge of the table. Now we need to insert into the table. Arzun is scribing the line I with did a it, Japanese uh, saw. It's, uh, it's lying. Oh, we're gonna out. Because of the depth of the bit, we need to move it aside a little bit go through another pass. To clean up with the chisel because of the ends of the tracks. Amazing, amazing. Where did you learn these amazing tools? In the home, Home Depot. Wow, wow. Such professional work. This is the fit all the way to the edge. Fits really, really snug and everything is flush exactly on the line and now we need to add glue sassel he's gonna eat in a restaurant <laughs> and this is what he left me with now to take Bye. care of all this yeah have a good time fucker now we need to clean all of this up and we'll continue tomorrow the next day the asshole is back now he's doing this side now we're gluing up the roll-ups the roll-ups really it's nice you know with the ice cream inside the ruler is applying the super glue Amazing. Now we need to let it dry while it cures with the super glue. Up next, we'll need to make the same piece over here for the router so we can use the router also as a table. Orzon is marking the center where we will drill a hole for the router bit head and then we need to make the four corners as we did before. We're using a whole saw bit to cut it out. I gotta give it to myself. What a nice shot. Oh, hello. To connect the router to the wooden piece, we take off this one that came with it. We need to make a new metal piece, which Azun is going to make out of this one. First, we drilled the holes for the screws that go into the router. Then we added a chamfer. After that came the four holes that screw into the wooden top. Last up was the hole for the router bits. Place for the router and the metal piece to the wooden piece itself. Azun is over there. Now you take your router, put it in. Amazing. Because the thickness of the wood plus the metal is too much for the bit, we want to mark it with a pencil, take it out, and then we're going to router out the whole thing so the thickness is smaller. Now we're gonna wrap up. <laughs> the metal piece over here. We set the gauge for the first to pass a bit small, and then we're gonna go even further. Sponsored by Makita. We first routed out about 0.5 centimeters, then we had to clean up with the chisel. Azuni thinks he's the salt bay of woodworking. This looks good, now it's flush, so we need to do the same, just in a more depth. The counter sink, as you can see, it's not like before, it's way wider. There was a lot of friction because it was exactly on the line. Accurate. This is what you went to see. <laughs> Wanted to say snug, but yeah, accurate is all. Now we need to screw it from this side to the plywood. It's a bit of a ghetto solution. Because we ate a lot of the material, it's really, really thin. So we put a screw from this side and then a piece of wood 
from this side, catching it. It's really strong. We'll need to come up with a better way, for, but for now, this is the way. The router jig is done. For my circular saw, the orange one is also done. Arzuni wants a jig for his saw also. It's huge. So we need to take these two pieces together. This one on the bottom and this one on top of it. Join them up and then we'll connect his saw. So we are taking the original one. We're gonna mark the holes we have here on the new one. Scroll it in from this side after making the hole. Then we add glue here. Arzuni is making holes in the other piece. We're gonna stamp them together. It's a great day with the router jig, benzo jig, and a benzo. A lot of uh, uh, woods that we took up uh, together. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> These are all the different combinations you can use with a table saw. We need to put the saw in and you need to place it outside, but we're done for today. Razoni is. That's it. He's gone to another place. So we'll continue tomorrow. Last up, we need to make a hole in this jig. Set my fence on both sides exactly on zero. This is the line we're left with. Now I'm gonna put up a fence. And we're gonna drill in with a circular saw. Nothing like a good old plunge cut with a circular saw. This is what we're left with. The first cut was a bit off as you can see, so I made another one, but it's fine that the channel for the blade will be a bit wider. This is how it's looking. I've put a straight edge to the blade. It's on zero on this side, same over here. Up next, we need to sand in everything flat, about 180 grit. Take apart the mechanism over here, paint it all black, put on some final finish, and then we'll be done. These are the four pieces we're going to be painting. First up, we need to take the washers off. I'm going to be putting painter's tape on all the places where they have inserts, threads. Otherwise, if I put black paint on this, it would just rub away when you use it. So only this part and these over here are going to be painted black. Now we'll let them dry, flip them around and do a second coat. These are the two parts, they fit in together, thread still works good, second one. I rounded all the sharp corners with the router because it looks and feels nicer. Looking amazing, same with the fence, now let the sanding begin. I started off with the belt sander, link in the description to see how we built this kick-ass box. First came 120 grit sandpaper because most of the parts were already sanded, plus it's plywood so it comes pretty smooth when you buy it. Then came 180 and 240 grit sandpaper with the Orville sander because the sides and the small nooks and crannies can be sanded with the belt sander. I want to take all the dust off. Brought DNA dad, and now we're gonna add some finish. Because I'm a cheap ass wannabe woodworker, I use some old finish and then the particle sanks to the bottom. When we put on the finish, it came out super dark, it ended up looking dope, so it's fine, but I gotta buy some new finishing oil. This is how everything is gonna dry, I've spaced everything apart so it has a lot of surface area. We'll come back tomorrow when it's all dry. The last thing we need to do is we need to add two plywood pieces from the underneath side, so the bolt over here has a place and it doesn't hit the posts that fit the whole thing. So we're gonna glue it and screw it from the underneath side. We'll make holes with threaded inserts through the piece upstairs into this to slat the whole thing up. I've turned the whole table upside down. These are the two plywood pieces. We need to, to make sure that there's 40 centimeters in between them because that's the measurement in the, between the two pieces of wood that hold the whole thing up. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna apply glue and then we're gonna screw it. Again, because I'm a wannabe woodworker, I put on the wood glue and then pre-drilled the screw holes. What I should have done is first pre-drilled, then added glue because the wood kept on sliding. Call this the finger technique. Use a pencil, you imbecile. Before screwing in, I double check the spacing in between the two pieces. See, it's easier when you pre-drill. Then I clean up the glue squeeze out. We're gonna make uh, through holes to connect the table side itself to pieces of wood that hold it. Everything is clamped together and I marked where I want to make the holes. These are the bolts we're gonna be using. They're gonna go inside and then there's gonna be threaded inserts in these pieces over here. I don't got a drill press like Arzuni's privileged ass, so I take a scrap piece, drill a hole in it and use it to make sure that I drill in straight. All four holes are done. Now we need to make a room uh, with this uh, chamfer bit because the screw goes in like this. It's not flush, so we need to make a place for it. Because I didn't want to drill holes too big, I drill in small increments, checking in between if it's big enough for the bolt head. There's two holes. We need to make them bigger and put threaded insert into them. These are the threaded inserts we're going to be using. The hole is way too small. That's what she said. <laughs> So we have these bits. We're gonna start with the 10, then with the 12, see what fits. Then we're gonna screw it in with this wrench. This is the size 10 hole. Let's fit it in. It's pretty easy to fit it in. And at the end, we're gonna tighten it so it's nice and flush with the wood. You line up the threaded insert with the hole. You can see the metal over there. Then you put the bolts to all sides, screw them in. Now that all the bolts are in, the whole thing is screwed and nice and sturdy. Last up, we have all these unused space on the back side. I wanna fill it in with this uh, space over here so we can put all the bolts that we need to store when it's not in use. These are the two pieces. I cut them pretty snug, so we're gonna hammer them in. So I'm gonna add a bit of glue. The idea here is I'm not using mechanical joint because the friction here is strong because I cut it exactly the dimension that the hole fits in. This is what the storage is used for. These bolts and these bolts over here. 
The assembly starts by setting up the saw horses and the two wooden slats on top. Then comes the base and bolts joining the two together. After that, the fence. Next, we connect the router to the plywood top with the bolts. Following that is the fence locking mechanism on both sides. In this case, the fence wasn't really needed, but if you want to make a dado or a rabbit, you need to set up the fence so it's in line with the router bit. And router to your heart's content. In order to switch from the router to the saw, we loosen the fence, take it back, then the bolts, and the router comes out. You put your circle saw in, fasten the bolts, then push the fence according to your measurement. Lock both sides and rip till your fingers come off. In part 2, we'll add an on-off switch. This thing scares the crap out of me. You can also see we need a outfit table. We wanted a table saw that is accurate, and accurate it is. 3 centimeters in width, baby. Last but not least, switching to our Zuni circle saw is easy peasy lemon tea easy. Bolts tighten or Zuni saw in, then you cut till Makita gives you a sponsorship. When disassembling, you start with loosening the bolts that hold the table base to the wooden slats, put the bolts in place, then the slats go, and finally the saw horses. I've rambled a lot, so now. We're back where we started the video. I'm really sorry for the noise. It's an air vent from another unit. If you are tight on a budget, on space, you have a circular saw or other tools, but you don't have the luxury to buy the really expensive stuff. I think this is a really good solution for you. It's compact when it's all disassembled. Not that expensive. I'd say about two three quarter plywood. A bit of wood, a bit of uh, bolts and nuts, and that's it. You can do it. It looks great. It's really functional. It's accurate. I'm really liking how it turned out. Like and sub for more.